Hi, and thanks for joining us on Live with Squacky. I'm Val Kelly, owner, president, CEO, and executive producer of Minute Landing VoiceOver LLC. And I'm so excited about our special guest today. We have Dave Benoit with us, who is an outstanding voice actor who's been working in the LA industry since 1990. And Dave, we're so excited to have you on the show today. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me, and it's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, and uh, I was really happy and excited and uh, honored when you asked me to be the uh, keynote speaker at MAVO, uh, and uh, it was really a, a highlight in my career. Oh, thanks so much, Dave. It was really great. I was, I was so excited about that because, you know, 2015 was our second year of that conference, and it was so important with the growth of it to have, you know, someone who is really well established in the industry, and it made such a difference to have you there, and your keynote address was so amazing. So for all of you guys watching, if you don't know, Dave was our keynote speaker at Mavo 2015, and it was just such an epic event. Um, he gave a session on video games, and his keynote address was just so inspiring and it was really great to have him there and we've kept in touch ever since and just to kind of make it more relatable for you guys um Dave and I had the honor of meeting each other at Voice Over Atlanta in 2013 I think it was was the first time I met you and I'll never forget that session that I took with you on video games I was so excited and I was like such a fangirl so I like hovered around after to get my picture and everything. It was so funny. Um, it's just, it's so funny how this industry works and how you end up, you know, kind of becoming friends with people after you're so initially starstruck, of course, you know, and that was, that was really exciting. So I learned so much from that. So thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. And you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to say something about that that starstruck thing, because we all have it with people that we admire who are doing something that we'd like to do, especially if we're on the, the road to, uh, we're just getting on the road to doing it, and there's somebody that has just been doing it for a long time. Um, but one of the things I liked about you and a lot of the people who are starting off in their career and they're kind of starstruck with me and other people in positions like me is uh, when you take me for a human too. When you get over that starstruck and see me as a person and realize, you know what? He's just a regular guy with a really cool job and I can do it too. Uh, because so many of my friends like you who uh, were just getting going, uh, maybe they'd been in it a little while, but they hadn't had the kind of success they wanted yet. And now they're having it. And, uh, you know, there's kind of a fraternity uh, and when I say fraternity, I mean fraternity and sorority of voice actors. And isn't it amazing how you meet somebody in this business, you didn't know them before, but you know their, their work, you know them by their reputation, and then they know you and your work and your reputation, and you're Insta-friends, instantly, yeah. because we, we've gone through this thing together. Yeah, it's so cool. It, that's really great advice, too, is just not forgetting that you know, no matter how big a star the person is, they are still human and they just, you know, just have normal days just like everyone else. I think it took me a little while to get over that when I first started in the industry. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Steve Noy. Oh my gosh, it's Bob Bergen. Oh my gosh, it's, you know, and all these people that I, you know, really admired and were doing things that I really wanted to do. And, um, and once you kind of you kind of get over it, but you just also kind of like balance it out and learn how to... <laughs> Learn how to not be like, oh my gosh, it's so and so. <laughs> <laughs> Even though in my head, that's always what I'm like. But <laughs> so anyway, well, let's get started and talk about how you got started in the voiceover industry. Can you tell us about it? Well, yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of us have begun our training in voiceover long before we've ever had the idea about being in voiceover. Uh, for me, as an elementary school kid, little kid, I'm watching cartoons and imitating the voices and, and having fun with that. And I think a lot of us as kids, uh, just the play that we do when we're cops and robbers, cowboys and Indians, uh, space aliens and hum whatever it is, uh, we play those characters and we have a good time doing it. And we don't think about, uh, gee, am I playing this character right? How would he say that? We just, we're just 
enjoying. Um, so I think that was really the beginning of my career was just being a kid and playing and, and copying voices. Um, I was a child actor on stage in Cleveland. Uh, if you ever meet a black actor from Cleveland, he probably went to Karamu House where I went. And it was a, a community art center where you could learn to paint and sculpt and uh, dance. And uh, uh, they had even fencing, uh, music and uh, acting. And I did music and art and acting and that kind of stuck with me. So uh, in high school, uh, I went to a private boys school, became the the uh, president of the Player Society. I wrote some plays, I directed some plays, acted in some plays, went off to college as a theater major for a couple of years, but I was also playing music, so I quit, went on the road as a musician, went back to school, finished in music, uh, and uh, moved to LA and became, well, moved to Northern California actually, became a disc jockey. And that's where I really discovered voiceover, uh, voicing commercials as a disc jockey, and uh, somehow at that time, uh, I didn't even realize there was this whole other industry until another jockey buddy of mine uh, was leaving. Oh yeah, I'm going over to the city, do some voiceovers and voiceover, what's that? You know, well, commercials, cartoons, TV promos. I make more money doing that than I do on the radio. And a little light bulb went off. <laughs> and I went, wow, that sounds like, me. I didn't do anything about it for a couple of years. Uh, but as my radio career continued, I became more and more interested in voiceover. And although I was uh, the morning jock on the number one station in town, I, I had told myself, well, as soon as I'm making as much money in voiceover as I am on the radio, I'm leaving this radio job and just doing voiceover full time. Uh, unfortunately, uh, or actually fortunately, uh, the station got a new program director. He fired everybody, including me. Uh, and that was uh, 1989. And I had just taken a workshop with an agent from Los Angeles who said, hey, you know, you're pretty talented. And if you ever decide to uh, come to Los Angeles, we'd love to represent you. How many voiceover actors would love to have to be oh invited <laughs> to be represented <laughs> by an agent in LA. I had no idea how lucky I was. Yeah. Well, about three months after that class uh, is when the firing happened and I had to find her card. I know I've got that card someplace. It's here. Oh, <gasps> there it is. Lee Gilbert uh, is her name. And I called her up and I said, were you serious? She said, sure. Put together a new demo and come on down. Well, in May, I started commuting back and forth from Berkeley, California to Los Angeles every week. Whoa. I, st I stayed on a couch of a buddy of mine for a while, a couch of, a, uh, of one of my uncles for a while. Uh, and then I shared an apartment for several months with another buddy of mine who was doing the same thing. Uh, and finally, uh, I was able to move my family down, uh, rented my house out up there, uh, uh, bought a little house in Pasadena, um, and really started working. Uh, had some ups and downs that first year. At one point, I had to go back on the radio for a little bit. Uh, yeah. There was a, a jazz station uh, that was looking for a voice, and I uh, did some part-time work there and then ended up doing mornings. Uh, I did that for about two more years, and by that time, I was making enough money in voiceover. I was like, you know what? <laughs> I can leave this <laughs> Just be a full-time voice, and it's been really good ever since. Wow, that is that is an amazing start. My gosh, like, I feel like everyone has a story, you know, everyone has a story that is very obviously personalized, but I feel like a lot of people just kind of are, sometimes a lot of people are doing other things, and they just go like, you know what, this is what I really want to do, you know, and it's it's funny how either fall into it or you're sort of guided in that direction in some way. And that's, that's really cool. So oh, yeah. as one and, you know, and I, I like to tell that story because everybody started someplace. And so often we look at somebody who's successful at something and we just kind of think, Oh, well, they were always doing this. They were always successful. This was always working for them. 
And it wasn't. There, there were a lot of ups and downs as I was trying to make that transition or as I was making that transition. And, uh, and even through a career, you have ups and downs. And I think the thing people have to understand is, one, you've got to put in the time and effort and you're probably going to have to do something that other people wouldn't do. Uh, and as you say, everybody's story is unique. Yeah, definitely. So as one of the most versatile voices in the industry, providing voices for commercials, narrations, TV promos, award shows, animation and games, what have some of your most memorable roles been over the years? Wow, um, that's a good one. I, one of the things I'm most proud of, uh, for 15 years, I was the voice of the NAACP Image Awards. Uh, now, that's a gig that only happens once a year. Uh, if it were, I could not possibly have lived on it. Um, but I took a lot of pride in being that voice, uh, that small part of that very big award show uh, that honors the best in black America uh, in entertainment and education and other things. Um, it was just a, a job that I felt proud to have and did for 15 years. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've, I've had the, the opportunity to be a, a narrator on some Discovery shows, some National Geographic shows, uh, and those are right up there for me uh, because I always liked watching those kinds of shows. Uh, I would have loved to, and I, well, I'm not saying that won't happen again, uh, but I'd <laughs> love to, to, to be even more of a regular. Uh, but one of the things I've noticed about my career, I do a little bit of this. I usually am doing some of everything all the time, but yeah. One one area rises, and then maybe it'll fall, and another area will rise. Uh, and lately, of course, it's been video games, and yeah. and uh, that actually, in the last ten years or so, uh, has been what most people know me for. And uh, the the role of of Lee Edward in the Walking Dead game uh, is, of course, uh, the one role that really turn things, well, I won't say turn things around, but put me on the map. Uh, right. the, game, the game won 100 Game of the Year awards. I was nominated for Best Performance in a Video Game uh, a number of times. Uh, even a BAFTA got to go to London for that ceremony. Didn't win. Oh, uh, but I, but it's but an I, honor just to be nominated, right? Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And I understand exactly what those, those, those actors that are nominated for uh, an Academy Award, I understand exactly what they meant. It is an honor uh, to be nominated. And yeah. uh, I did win a couple of awards, uh, just just not the BAFTA. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool, Dave. Oh my gosh. Wow. So what are some tips that you use to add versatility to the characters that you're performing? Because that's so important in any type of script, but I feel like especially in animation, you know, cartoons, video games, being versatile in those roles are a lot of times I think what are going to help you book the role if you're doing something kind of different and showing your versatility. So what are some tips that you could offer to add? Well, to you that know, I, 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 I think really uh, good, strong acting fundamentals uh, yeah. are the first thing. And um, a lot of people uh, have that great ear and connection to their voice where they can imitate uh, any politician, actor uh, that they hear. That's not me. I don't have that. But what I do have is the ability or an empathy with how I think certain characters uh, think and feel. Uh, so... With the, the, the limited range of voices I do, compared to some of my buddies, uh, <laughs> I, what I try to tap into is that emotional range, that worldview, uh, the thoughts, the fears, uh, the desires of a character, and play that. Uh, often when I'm teaching, one of the things I say is, look, I am not as concerned with the words 
as I am with what's behind the words. Right. So if you were given, just for an example, if you were given a script, you know how sometimes like, well, I don't know if you get scripts like this anymore, but I still do. <laughs> like, you know, sometimes you'll get a script. It'll give you like everything. It'll give you the picture. It'll give you <laughs> a lot of stuff. That's like so rare. You know what I mean? But yeah, but then <laughs> other times, what's that? I was going to say, sometimes you'll get page after page, it seems, or a long paragraph in small print of who this character is and what happened to them in their lives. Uh, yeah. And a picture of them, and then five lines. <laughs> I know. And you're like, what? So yeah. say, say you get the opposite of that, though, because I have been getting a lot of scripts where they, they don't give any picture. They just give you five lines, and they – We'll put like, but they'll put like, it's so funny because they'll put like an emotion next to it, you know, yeah. like yeah. happy, sad, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like it's usually a little bit more detailed than happy or sad. You know, I, um, what do you do when, what's your process when you break that down? And I know what my process is, but what do you do when you get something? First like of that? all, I, I realize that it's done by a human being. Human beings are often lazy and often wrong. Uh, and I trust my instinct about a script. So even though they may say that character is angry, um, anger might be there, but why is that character angry? Sometimes we're angry because we're hurt. Sometimes we're angry because somebody else was hurt. Sometimes we're angry uh, and we don't know why we're angry. Um, so I try to um, create a reason that this care for why this character is angry what's what's the nature of this angry where is that anger coming from uh is it funny anger is it uh angry angry uh is this anger uh is this character really angry um i think one of the things that happens when we don't get enough information and even sometimes when we do we haven't made clear enough decisions about who this character is. Mm -hmm. I try to give, uh, give whatever that line is, whether they've given it to me or not, a pre-life. What, what happened that this character is saying what he's saying? Uh, I try to imagine where I am. Am I inside? Am I outside? How close am I to the person that I'm talking to? Am I talking to myself? Um, am I cold? Am I hot? Am I injured? Am I happy? Am I well fed? Am I eating? Uh, what's what all, all I, I, I create a whole scenario, right? And I, I want to see that picture of where I am because, um, I, I look at these are the challenges for voiceover for character work, right? If you're on stage, if you're in a movie or television show, uh, you have memorized your lines, uh, you probably have makeup on you have a costume on, you have another actor that you're bouncing energy off of, uh, and you have blocking, so you're going here and moving here. And We don't have that when we're stuck in front of that microphone with just words. Right. And so I try to paint the whole picture, what my movement is, all of that in my head, and then deliver the lines. And I never uh, work like this with my hands at my side I, I want my body to be able to right. move um, because your body informs your voice. And, uh, you know, that, that whole thing, uh, voiceover 101, if you want to sound like you're smiling, what do you do? Put a smile on your face. <laughs> and that works for other emotions as well. Cool. That's great. Okay, that's like 160 you. bucks. That's what oh, I mean. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, okay, so. How would you say that performing for video games differs from an, like an animated series on TV? Is there a big difference? Well, yeah, there's, there's some big differences. First of all, animated series tend to lean into the comedy. It's not to right. say that uh, they don't have drama sometimes in, in, in animation. They do. Uh, and video games tend to lean into the drama. And yes, sometimes uh, those scripts are funny too, but they tend to be more movie funny than wacky funny. Um, so that's one little thing you, you kind of watch out for. Um, also, uh, video games tend to be uh, a little more subtle in the acting style. 
Um, so I, I think those are the a couple of things. And then if you're working on a, a, an animated series, chances are you're getting to work with other actors. You might all be in the room together and you're doing uh, the script in sequence. You're starting with scene one and going through to the end. Uh, in video games, 99% of the time you're working by yourself. You will not see the complete script. You will just see your lines and perhaps the lines that are accompanying yours. Uh, you won't be working with another actor. I think I said that. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's a different process. So you, you have to create more in your head with video games than you do with uh, animation. Got it. And have you, you've been, you've been on an animated series. You've been on some animated series. Oh, yeah. yeah. TV, right? You were on like yeah. DuckTales and stuff like that, right? Uh, DuckTales, oh, Captain Planet, uh, Pro Stars, uh, 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 what, uh, um, uh, a bunch of them, uh, uh, New Kids on the Block. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, awesome. And, uh, okay, KO. Uh, and, and now most of my animated work ends up being guest star in this or that. Uh, cool. I'd love to get onto another series. When, <laughs> where, where's, my, where's my Simpsons? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. <laughs> and I remember when they had to take a pay cut from $8 million a year to $6 million a year, and I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh well a couple million it's no big deal right <laughs> all right so let's see where am i so what have some of your biggest obstacles been in the industry so far you know probably my biggest obstacles were my own uh coming out of radio i really had this thing and you know you because you're, you're in radio you're trying to make everything sound so wonderful and you've you've spent uh years um, picking up copy that's uh, supposed to be done in 60 seconds, but it's 70 seconds worth of copy or 30 seconds and it's 40 seconds worth of copy and it's right. phone numbers and directions and sale points and, and you don't really have a connection with it. But mm -hmm. you've learned to make it sound good because now you can, if for just forty nine ninety nine, you can get this and twenty percent off it here. So go by here and do the. You you learn how to make the words do a dance that simulates connection to what you're saying and excitement about what you're saying. But the public has become uh, savvy to that. Nobody okay. believes that guy anymore. There's still some of those commercials out there. Yeah. But when you look at the landscape of voiceover for especially uh, commercials now, that's that's not who we believe. We want to hear from somebody that we feel like we connect with. It may be, you know, some there was uh, somebody said, oh, we want to uh, hear from somebody who reminds us of us. And I think that's very true, but it doesn't have to be that. It just has to be somebody that we, we kind of have a feeling of sincerity. We know who they are and we believe them. Um, so I, I, I think that was a big obstacle for me. And in my teaching now, uh, a lot of my students are, are people like that who uh, may have come out of a genre of voiceover where, um, um, have come from a genre where maybe they have to be very clear about what they're saying. And yeah. maybe they're doing a lot of, you know, e-learning or, or, <laughs> or, you know, explainer videos where everything has to be heard clearly. And there's nothing wrong with having the ability to do that. But you have to be able to turn that off and turn something else on uh, when you're doing animation or video games, and especially commercials now, where you know everybody says, uh, "Oh, yeah, we want to make that conversational." Uh, and I, I end up helping a lot of people with that because it was such a challenge for me early in my career. Yeah, that is definitely something I think a lot of people struggle with is the whole conversational. You know, it's like you, it's very easy, I think, to go like, yeah, I'm going to be conversational. And then you get in the booth and you're like, so today on blah, blah, blah. And you're like, wait, what is that? Like, where did that voice come from? I you have to go back to, well, who are you and who are you talking to? Uh, you know, it, it, as an actor, sometimes it's not really you talking. I mean, it, it could be a character with a completely different point of view than you have. Um, but it's got to be an honest 
character uh, that's talking that, uh, one of the things I tell my students, the words are only there to remind you of what you're saying. Right. And we get very caught up in reading the words and this idea that if I read them correctly and I put them together in the right way and just pause at the right place, I'm, I'm being conversational and we're being anything but. Um, you, I, I like to familiarize myself with the script, uh, but mostly know who it is that's talking and who they're talking to, what my worldview is uh, in this character. And then not worry about trying to make anything perfect or completely understood or, or, uh, it, or beautifully enunciated. Uh, I just want to say it with the inner dialogue that the person speaking would have. And there's a certain amount of imperfect, imperfection finding words, um, thoughts that will make you smile in a place or whatever that is written into the script and nobody could write into the script that brings that reality to it. Yeah, absolutely. Those are all really good, really good points. Um, so we, we've already kind of talked about some of your biggest successes. I would say, you know, the awards and the NAACP and things like that. But is there anything else in your career that you would consider um, one of your biggest successes that you've done so far? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say a big success that uh, I didn't expect were things just like this. When I got into voiceover, all I wanted to do was work and have a decent career. Uh, I wanted to be the next Don LaFontaine. That never happened, but <laughs> all kinds of wonderful things have. And uh, one of the biggest is that someone like yourself, Val, wants to talk to me about my career, that uh, the people in my industry uh, respect my career and who I am and what I've done and want to listen to me uh, share my experiences and uh, knowledge of the career. Oh, thanks, Dave. That means a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's an honor to have you on the show. It's an honor to hear your story and to talk to you. It's really in my, I, oh, no, but no, but seriously, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, someone like me who doesn't live in a major city, so I'm doing everything I can to still be working in voiceover and running my company and meeting great people like you. And it's, it's really exciting to be able to then, you know, have conversations with, with, you know, you and other people in the industry about what you're doing and the success that you're having and how to improve my own career and how people watching can improve theirs. And that's why I started the show because I wanted to have a chance to, you know, talk to people about what they're doing. So it's really nice. So your, um, your experience in the industry is amazing, of course, but do you have any new goals that you're currently working on accomplishing that you'd like to share with us? Wow. You know, uh, I just want to keep working and keep the level of my work uh, up. And when I say the level of my work, I'm not talking about how much as I am talking about quality of, right. um, you know, we all have to worry about, especially if you're doing video games, you have to worry about, uh, your, your voice itself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you've uh, been in a video game that has a lot of, uh, battle chatter and uh, <laughs> the next day you're, oh, yeah, well, you know, I get it. So, uh, what I want to be able to do is, continue working and have my voice still be uh, uh, as strong and pliable as ever. So how do you, what do you do to take care of your voice in between all those battle cry scenes? <laughs> uh, well, I stay hydrated, a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, I, if I've, I've, I've had a tough, tough uh, day, uh, lots of tea. Matter of fact, the tea doesn't matter as much as the hot water with honey and lemon. Right. Um, it, it, but, you know, I'll, I'll have some tea for a little flavoring, but that, that hot water, lemon, and honey, honey, and especially um, uh, uh, raw honey. Right. Uh, once they've pasteurized it, a lot of the good stuff is gone. 
but if you get raw honey, it really helps you out, uh, helps out your throat. And, and the, uh, the, the lemon, um, the acidity of it, I know we all want to have uh, non-acidic diets now, <laughs> alkaline diets, but the acidity in, in the lemon helps clear your throat of any gunk. Right. Cool. That's really good advice for people who are trying to keep their vocal <laughs> yeah, and, and when you're not shouting professionally, don't shout. And when you're sick with a cold, don't whisper. Ah, whisper. that's a good one. That's a really good one. Yeah. Whispering can be as tough on your voice as shouting. Good to know. So what, are, what advice can you give to voice actors that are just starting out? Like possibly something that you've learned in your career that if you had to redo it, you would do it differently. Um, well, one, expect that you're going to have to do some things that take you out of your comfort zone. Um, you're going to have to spend some hours that you might not have spent. Otherwise, some money that you might not have spent. Um, someone was in a conversation the other day uh, on Facebook. Sometimes I get sucked into those conversations. <laughs> uh, and and it was it was that somebody had asked the question, well, how do I get my voiceover career started if I if I have a full time job? Can you do it? And a number of people and, and friends of mine with uh, great careers. As a matter of fact, we're a friend of ours, uh, Bob Bergen, had piped oh. in, I, I, I piped in as well. Uh, yeah, uh, most of us had to balance uh, something we had to do for money here and with you know, getting our careers going and, and how much do we put into classes uh, and, and, and coaching. And one, I've noticed the people that I see going to conventions, taking classes and workshops, whether for me or, or other people, and are staying visible in the community are the people who I see working. Right. Um, but so often when you've got that job, uh, I, I remember a number of people uh, who got jobs and when their opportunities came to move to a Los Angeles or when I was in radio, take that first radio job, they'd gotten a job and, oh gosh, I'm making enough money now I can keep this apartment and I can get a new car and, and I can buy some new clothes and I can do this and I've got this credit card. And after a while, uh, they've gotten hooked on, on that job money. Yeah. And, and they've got, they've committed themselves to paying for things every month that taking that, that existential leap into voiceover now is going to be a problem because they wouldn't be able to meet their, their obligations. Whereas, take that job, sure. Uh, hopefully it's a job that, that you have some flexibility with so you can, you can work. Uh, and do your voiceover work or do your voiceover training or whatever, but save your money. Save okay. your money. And even once your career starts, you get a great gig, uh, you become the promo voice for uh, some cable station or whatnot, it's more money than you've ever made, still save your money. Uh, because we are in a business where things go up and down and uh, there are no guarantees for us. Uh, right. Always... Uh, be looking for new business. Um, I, when 2008, when the, when the uh, economy crashed, I wasn't prepared. I had refinanced my house, sent my kid to school, so forth and so on. And um, I had been making a lot of money. And anytime one gig ended, something else was offered. And suddenly the economy was broken. My two biggest clients went out of business. Uh, and I had to sell my house, move into a condo, and it took me a couple of years to build that back and uh, get a new house. And but what I discovered after about three, four months of you know feeling sorry for myself and complaining about the the uh, uh, economy, which yeah, the, this is something that happened outside of me that I had no control over. But what I did have control over was me, and uh, so I just started doing the things I did when I started my career. I was get, I started, you know, getting in touch with uh, former clients and new clients. Uh, I had to learn, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the 
the internet and social media had become a thing that I was not involved in, I had to learn to become involved in it. Yeah. And, uh, and just know that when you're walking that path, you may have an idea about, well, if this would happen, everything would be fine. Well, that is probably not what is going to happen. But yeah. something else is going to happen. Uh, where your blessings come from, you cannot know. All you can do is stay on your path. And don't listen to those uh, nabobs of negativity. Uh, that, oh, wow, voice. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, everybody's trying to do voiceover. You'll never do voiceover. I, I can't tell you how many people told me, oh, oh you're going to move to Los Angeles and do voiceover, man? Oh, man, you know, that, that you you're not going to make, you know, I, I tried that. It didn't work for me. Why do you think it's going to work for you? Those kinds of <laughs> things. I, I was doing informational interviews with uh, broadcast producers at one point, and, and a guy told me, yeah, you know, we got all the people we need. Um, I had a guy, was a, a radio guy, I was trying to get a radio at the time. Uh, well, you know, there's something wrong with your voice. You'll never make it in it. I could have <laughs> listened to those people. Yeah. But I didn't. Good. And, you know, people wonder sometimes, well, what kind of voice do you need? What kind of voice do you have? That's the <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's cool. Really good advice, Dave. Um, do you have any advice for actors who are seeking representation from a talent agent? Do you think it's necessary to have a talent agent anymore? I know that things are evolving so fast, so it's always interesting to see what people think about that? Uh, you know, I am not a fan of the pay to play sites, but uh, by the same token, they're a feature of the landscape of the business now. And if you don't have an agent, it they are the option that you have, uh, and perhaps the easiest option. Otherwise, you're, you know, spending a lot of time finding your own clients, and maybe right. you don't have that much time. Um, I'm going to cover them and agents. Uh, the pay to play sites are not on our side. We are not who they are working for. They are working for the people who want to hire talent and their job is to get us to do the job for as little as possible and make as much money as they can in the meantime. So you have players like a voices.com that you will pay uh, four or $500 a year, or maybe $2,500 a year or $5,000 a year, uh, because uh, they're gonna put it on different levels that you will get your more auditions or better auditions uh, or auditions faster. Uh, and then they will also handle uh, the entire job of uh, choosing who gets hired and what the pay is. Well, a client may come to them and say, I have $5,000 for this job. Uh, and they bid it out and you bid and you get the job uh, and they're going to pay you a thousand dollars. Well, they pocket the other four uh, as opposed to paying it to you, the talent. Uh, and they charge you 20% to pay you the ultimate $800 that you're going to get. Uh, so you've, you've paid them to get the audition. Now you, you uh, lost, uh, you know, 80% of what you would have made and you're paying 20% on what they, on the pittance that they finally let you get. It's not dishonest, but it's really not right. Whereas your agent wants to get you as much money as possible because your agent gets only gets 10% of that. So they're right. always trying to up how much you're making as opposed to how cheaply can I sell you? Right. Uh, now, to get an agent, um, agent is, if you are working and you have a lot of repeat work, you can go to an agent and say, hey, you know, I'm looking for an agent and these are my clients and uh, this is the money I'm making. I'd like to sign up with you. Uh, are you willing to take me? Well, there's a good chance they might take you because now they can make that 10% and start handling uh, your bookings for you. Um, but if you're not working, which a lot of people aren't, or working enough, what you really have to have is a great demo. Your demo has to be right. Yeah. Um, so I would say, A, be really good at what you do uh, and get a great demo. And to get that demo heard, um, 
you might want to, whoever your coach is, uh, if they have a connection with some agents, see if they'll write a, a, a cover letter for you or, or, uh, or be the person to send your demo. Uh, if you send a demo, uh, and chances are, if you send it, even if they like it, you're not going to hear from them right away. Uh, if you hear from them at all, they might like right. your demo, but they've got somebody or several somebodies that fit the category that you're in and they can't really bring you in without hurting uh, their, the stable of talent they have right now. Uh, but if they listen and get back to you and say, oh, well, thanks, we can't do it right now. Uh, love your demo. Uh, good luck. Uh, that's a success because you, you have a conversation now. Stay in touch with them every few months. You get a new new gig or something, new cartoon series, a uh, new uh, toy that you're voicing. Uh, just drop them. A, well, first of all, say thank you for getting back uh, to them. Uh, and when you get that new gig, say, oh, hey, just wanted to let you know I'm still looking for an agent and I just did such and such and so and so. Uh, include that demo in it. If you have a copy of that work, you never know that call, that call may come. Uh, persistence pays off. Uh, too many people give up. Oh man, I, had, I heard one no. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you heard the no good, if you didn't hear the no, you just never heard from them, eh, that's a little problematic. Uh, but if you heard that no, if they took the time to get in touch with you to say thanks, but no thanks, consider that uh, uh, a step in the right direction. Yeah. It's definitely a process. I remember when I started and it was like, you know, people would be like, well, to get an agent, you have to be working, but to get work, you have to have an agent. And it was like this whole like catch 22 kind of a thing. And I was like, what do I do? You know? So I just kept, you know, working at it. And eventually yeah. I ended up getting a couple of agents, but it's, it's a process, you know? And I think there's, there's so much, you can do on your own now too, without necessarily doing a pay to play. Like I, I made the decision a few years ago to not do pay to plays anymore. Cause I did them for a little while and it was fine, but I just didn't like the whole process of, you know, the low amount of pay and all of that. And so I was like, I made a decision. I was like, you're either going to make it or break it. Like just, I just like quit all of them, you know? And that was the point when I ended up getting a presentation, but it was like, it's, it's scary. It's a scary process of going like, I'm going to make this decision and say like, I mean, they're going to do this or I'm not, you know, and if it, yeah. if it works, it does. And if it doesn't, well, I can either just keep trying or I can give up, but I'm not, I don't give up easily. So, and, you know. And there, there's so many categories of work now that weren't say 10, 15, 20 years ago. The, yeah. the whole e-learning world, uh, the world of audiobooks, um, the, the corporate narration, uh, the explainer videos, those are areas that really didn't exist uh, not too many years ago. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, I think, uh, you know, if you're looking for work in different areas, LinkedIn uh, people know about Mandy, uh, all the video work, and they have voiceover work there too. Um, but you can, uh, you can find work through LinkedIn by finding the kind of people who uh, you want to hire you. So if you're interested in uh, video games, find the video game uh, casting directors and writers and directors uh, right. and game developers. If you're interested in e-learning, the e-learning developers, corporate narration, the corporate narr uh, uh, producers, um, and, and build relationships there. And once again, don't expect to send one little note, which, you know, sometimes I get them, that, why did they send that to me? I'm, 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 I'm somebody looking for the same kind of thing they are. They're sending their note to the wrong person. It says to me yeah. they were lazy about uh, their search uh, for... Mm -hmm who they should be contacting. And right. you can't, because I've gotten them, I can imagine what some people must, uh, somebody who's a casting director for video games or something. Hi, I'm so-and-so. I sure would like to be in your video games. <laughs> um, that's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Do a research. Who is this company? What games have they done? 
why would you like to work for their game for their company other than just oh because i'm looking for work and i need somebody to hire me uh that's not who people want to work with people want to work with somebody uh, has a little bit of a track record what's in it for them right um you know if your your demo's good uh you have a maybe you can uh fanboy out or fangirl out a little bit about them as a producer of games and the games they've oh man i love this game da, 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 da. uh i loved it when you 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 did so well with such and such and so and so uh here's my demo if there's ever a part for me would love to be in it uh, and uh, i uh, those kinds of things where you know you're you're uh, paying compliments to them um the other side of that too is don't ask for work Offer your services. How can you be of a help to somebody? Find uh, that tact as opposed to, you know, I really need to work, get some work in this business. And uh, if you would hire me, I'd really be glad. You know, also don't do things like, God, the guy you have now sucks. You should get, you should get rid of him and hire me. Uh, and I, I've seen people do all of, of these things, uh, none of which are going to endear you uh, to that prospective client. Uh, clients want somebody who's going to help them with their problem. Right. Uh, who's going to be an asset to them. Uh, and relationships take a while. Think about your really good friends. You've known them for a long time and you just found out after years and years about some weird thing about them that you thought <laughs> you could have known, but you didn't. Uh, relationships take time and, and that doesn't sound like good news uh when you know first of the month you got a bill to pay but you have to think long term yeah it really does it does take a long time to build up those types of relationships with client potential clients you know and there's there's so many out there and linkedin is a great way to find those people there's social media and we'll talk about that in a little bit but it's there's so many ways that you can connect with people now. It's just amazing. You know, I, I've i met so many people on Twitter and, you know, uh, I don't like to talk about Facebook, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so what are some projects that you're working on now that you're allowed to talk about? Well, uh, I can talk about some things that have come out. Uh, Gears of War, Gears 5, it's been a game that's been out uh uh, 10 or 12 years uh, uh, Microsoft game uh, and uh, I'm a new character on uh, Gears 5 um, that's kind of exciting um, I j just uh, just released two was a game called After Party uh, which is weird and wonderful uh, <laughs> the story is uh, Two friends, lifelong friends, were just about to graduate from college, and somehow they find themselves dead and in hell. Uh, but there's a way to get out of hell, and it is you have to outdrink the devil. And uh, so it's a series of drinking party uh, uh, sections. <laughs> and uh, if you, if when you win, you get to uh, outdrink the devil, which is me. Whoa! <laughs> I, I, but the devil is. He's not, uh, you know, he's not that devil, no. Whoa. He, uh, he's, a, he's a much more, uh, you know, kind of nice guy, you know, stuck in hell. Yeah, I kind of run this place, but, you know, it's not all bad. And uh, it's it's actually a very fun game. <laughs> Sounds wow. <good. laughs> you get to play the devil, Dave. That's kind of cool. I mean, and what's, I tell you what's funny. Fun character. I have played God and the devil. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, let's see, uh, Fallout, uh, the new, f the, the latest Fallout, I, I play several characters, but my favorite is uh, uh, a, a mutant uh, who uh, ordinarily the mutants just want to uh, kill people and eat them, but this mutant uh, has a pet cow that he loves <laughs> and uh, just has decided that it, it, it'd be much more fun to be a trader, uh, uh, trading goods uh, with humans than uh, fight them. So uh, he does things like throws barbecues for them and uh, <laughs> all kinds. He's 
he's really a cool character. That's cool. That sounds like a lot of fun. Wow. Oh, yeah. Cool stuff going on. Oh, you know what? I, I, I did I don't know why I didn't mention it. Uh, Fortnite. Uh, Fortnite. Oh. One of the biggest games in the world. Yeah. Uh, I'm in uh, the Fortnite Save the World uh, part of their franchise, uh, which cool. is wild and wacky. It's the craziest stuff the world has ever seen. Uh, <laughs> I, I play a character called the director who uh, loves nothing better than to be in corporate meetings and uh, follow all the corporate rules, and he has to deal with all kinds of wacky, crazy people uh, as he saves the world uh, with with yeah. the hero. That's awesome! Wow, that game is huge. I mean, all of those are, but like that's so, <laughs> that one, that so one cool. Is huge. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Oh my gosh, I never got into playing that or anything and my kids don't play it but i know a lot of like my high school students a lot of the high school students that well you know what's it, what's so. funny and this is just um a little note for all people who want to uh play want to uh be voices in video games but they're worried that the fact that they don't play video games is a problem i don't play video games either i'm an athlete really? yeah, yeah. I don't play uh i played years and years and years ago don't have time now yeah uh, but I still love the industry and I love what I do in the industry. Uh, and you, you don't have to be a gamer to be a voice in video games. Yeah. Tell us about your voiceover coaching because let's see, you, you're still coaching and you oh, yeah. do sessions with people in person or via Skype, right? Uh, yeah. I, I actually prefer Skype uh, for private coaching. Uh, because it saves the uh, talent time back and forth. Yeah. Uh, and then I don't have to clean up my, uh, my studio quite so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, but I, I, I want to get to see you. And then uh, if you come, I record what you did. But uh, if you're doing it via Skype, I'm recording the whole session. You're seeing yourself. Yeah. Uh, and, and me. And you get the video and everything in between. All right. the interaction other than just... Uh, your takes so uh, and people can book themselves they can go to my website davefinoy.com and cool. hit the study vo tab uh, and uh, book themselves if they buy five or more that they, they save money uh, also I have been traveling around the country and the world uh, teaching uh, I teach up in San Francisco and in Las Vegas uh, in Dallas and Atlanta uh, Seattle. Uh, I have about to take, I think, my sixth trip uh, next year to London uh, to do some teaching. I have done some teaching in Normandy, France now with uh, J. Wow. Michael Collins and his uh, European retreat. Uh, I have done workshops via webinar uh, around the country in Australia. Uh, and uh, this year I was invited to um, a voiceover conference in Bogota, Colombia, where I went down and taught my workshop and uh, did some presentations. And fortunately, we have people who are very bilingual and can uh, yeah. translate on the fly. So <laughs> if I'm in the room and, and uh, someone, a Spanish speaking person is doing their presentation, I have some headphones on and somebody's translating for all the English speakers. Uh, that we have in our head, just like the UN. And yeah, uh, when I was cool. giving my presentation, uh, everybody had uh, a translation from my English into Spanish. So it, it was very cool. And I, I learned a lot uh, about, the, you know, work in different places. Uh, in the United States, um, we don't have the size of, of uh, dubbing market that they do. Most of yeah. the we do we call anime uh, or you know maybe you're you're replacing uh, some actor's voice in something if you can imitate that person's voice but in the spanish speaking world they have been dubbing things uh from english to spanish for generations yeah uh, and nowadays thanks to netflix and amazon 
uh, and the world getting smaller because of technology. There are hit shows in a Germany, in a France, uh, in Spain, in Portugal, or wherever on the planet uh, that are being dubbed into English here, being dubbed into English and then played for American audiences. And the quality of dubbing is so much better than it used to be. I remember the jokes about uh, the uh, Japanese uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> monster movies. Oh no, he's over there. <laughs> and uh, you, you, just don't, you don't run into that anymore. Exactly. Um, and that, that's a whole new area of work for English speaking voice actors. Yeah. There's so, there's so many different types of work now. It's just crazy. It's really exciting. Oh yeah. That's so cool. I, is that the first time that they've done that conference in, in Bogota or is that? Uh, I think this was, yeah, this was the first, uh, the first one there and uh, I was honored to be invited down and uh, I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, Yeah. I, 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 studied a little Spanish, but I knew I wasn't going to be. <laughs> uh, so I was really glad they had the translators. Yeah, definitely. I know it'd be like, and they'll be like, where's the library? What is, what do I need? To do that? <laughs> yeah. like, really Val? That's all you learned in high school Spanish. Come on. Come on. <laughs> um, good. So, okay. That's really cool. I'm, I'm glad they're still doing coaching and that, that conference sounds like it was awesome. Oh, it was, it was. And, uh, Oh, I should say every, uh, every Wednesday, 6 PM Pacific time, I do a thing on Facebook live, absolutely free. Ask Dave Fenoy anything. Uh, you can jot down your questions or send them to me beforehand and, uh, I'll answer them to the best of my ability. And, <laughs> So, uh, and if uh, they want to go to my website and sign up, uh, I'll be sending them little notes from time to time, little uh, quick tips uh, about voiceover. uh, And and I was trying to write them, but I think it'll just, you know, videotape them. It's a lot easier and faster for me. Uh, Yeah. So that's what's going on with me. Cool. So since you already had the experience of being a keynote speaker at Mid-Atlantic Voice Over 2015, otherwise known as NAVO 2015, can you tell us about your experience? Because we have one coming up in 2020. So can you tell us about your experience at the at our event and what it was like to have such an integral role? We talked about it a little bit, but just for people who might be thinking about attending. Uh, well, one, I think you should attend. Um, the people who go to voiceover conferences are the people who end up working. Uh, it's the people who put themselves in. I know sometimes people can, I kind of want to do this, but I don't want anybody to steal my money. I don't, I, and you're coming with the wrong attitude. Um, these are events that you should go to. A mid Atlantic voiceover conference is definitely one you should attend. Uh, it's in the DC area. Um, you know, it's, it's convenient to people, uh, on the East coast and up and down that corridor. And there, that's a huge market for voiceover and just about every aspect, not as much in the animation and video games, but everything else is all along that corridor. Uh, so you should go, uh, the, the things you're going to get are, uh, experts in various areas of voiceover that are going to uh, do workshops. Um, you're you're going to get to meet uh, people who have the products that we need, the microphones, the mixers, the uh, whatever you might want, booths, uh, whatever you might need, uh, you get to meet those people and see the equipment that is being sold. I it amazes me sometimes the number of people, you know, what kind of microphone should I get? We're gonna, and I'm like, that's not a ask me question. That's a do a little research on the internet question. Well, yeah. you, you, you go to the mid Atlantic voiceover uh, conference and, and they're there. You can see the microphones, you can see the, booth, right. you can see the, uh, the, the equipment that you'd want to buy. And even better yet, you can talk to other people who are there, who are doing what it is you want to do. 
and find out information as well. And uh, one of the things I think people sleep on about conferences is you get to meet people who are on the same path that you're on. Some are further ahead, some are right where you are, some may be behind you someplace. But these are people who will understand what you are up to. Um, your mama may not understand, your daddy, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband, uh, your kids. Your f People don't understand what it is we do. Uh, but now you're in a place where you have somebody that you can share what you're going through with, that you can ask questions of. Not just, uh, say, myself, uh, who's had a long career, but somebody who's closer to where you are and what and exactly what, well, how did you get started? What are you doing? Which may seem more real to you than talking to somebody that's been doing this for 30 years. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a great event and um, it is we're not on here to talk about that exactly. But like, I mean, I just wanted to get your perspective on what you got out of it because I feel like people are, you know, at the point right now where they're thinking about, should I go to Mabel 2020, you know, and it's a year away and it's still, oh, it's a year away, but it's, it's just but good you know to what? hear past it, experiences it, from people. It, it being a year away means you can start saving your money. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And we do have a payment plan, so that's another option too. For there you go. Love it too. There. <laughs> and here, here's the thing. I was there, what, 2015? Yeah. It'll be 2020. The fact mm -hmm. that you are there, because I know the kind of work commitment it is to put one of these <laughs> things on. You're not putting that on to make money. Yeah, right. I mean, you might so want to make money at it, but th this is not the kind of thing that is going, oh, I'm making all this money and I'm going to. You're doing this out of the love of voiceover and voiceover people. Um, and you're still there. You're still doing it. Uh, and there are a few, the one that's coming up uh, this weekend here, uh, that's voiceover. Uh, VO Atlanta, uh, uh, Mid-Atlantic Voiceover Conference. All you guys have been around and continue to be around and continue to improve and offer more. Um, yeah, go, go, go. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> You heard them, guys. Get you at midatlanticview.com. You can sign up right now. Right. <laughs> Shameless plug right there. Um, no so, shame. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. So let's talk about social media for a minute. Which, for a minute, sorry. Um, so which platforms do you use and why? And what's your favorites and all of that kind of good stuff? Uh, you know, I probably use Facebook the most, but I don't use it really. I mean, I do use it for voiceover. But uh, I'm kind of using it for everything. Uh, <laughs> I use, I I should and am going to be using LinkedIn more. I do use it. Uh, that's where I really take care of business. Yeah, is on LinkedIn uh, when I'm trying to uh, get new clients. And I, I I tell you, from when the economy crashed, I told myself then always be looking for new business. Um, just because you have a lot of people know who you are, doesn't mean everybody knows who you are. You don't know yeah. where your next gig is coming from. You don't know the next time, uh, that client you've had for forever goes out of business. So always be looking for new business. And I think LinkedIn is probably the best area, uh, to work in to, to do that. Um, I like Facebook, uh, because I can keep in touch with uh, my voiceover friends and see what people are doing. Uh, yeah. And you will, you'll get a lot of information about uh, where conferences are and uh, people talking about the jobs they've done. Sometimes they're saying, oh, so-and-so is looking for a voice that does such and such. There's some of that there. Yeah. Uh, but LinkedIn is really the place for business. Uh, I use Twitter, but not nearly, uh, I'm not uh, a Twitter file. I don't use it nearly as much as the president. Um, and, <laughs> uh, but Twitter is a good thing. Uh, 
sometimes because especially cartoons and video games, the more Twitter followers you have, uh, the more likely you are going to be to win a job that maybe they were kind of on the fence. Oh, well, we've got this person and this person. And we like them both just about the same, but this person has more Twitter followers. Oh, that's because, cool. Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, um, like everything else, uh, the TV shows that make it are the ones that have the most viewers. The video games that make it are the ones that have the most buyers of that game, the players of that game. And the actors sometimes who win are not just the actors who are the best in the part, but can bring something else to the table. It has backfired a few times on the game developers. Uh, yeah. They have got, <clears throat> they brought in, uh, you know, Twitter influencers, uh, you know, uh, Instagram influencers, because yeah. of a big audience of, of this particular demographic, but then the people can't act. Uh, yeah. And it's like, oh, we got to replace them. But <laughs> uh, uh, so it's, it's not always what's going to help you. I mean, you really need to be a, a good actor first. But it, if you, you know, make, have yourself a presence, create a presence. Yeah, definitely. Do you use Instagram at all? Or you just, I, I know use, you have an account, but do you, yeah, do you, I use, use it. I don't, do on it? I don't use it that much. What I like about Instagram for me is uh, if I post a picture on Instagram, I can do it to Twitter and Facebook at the same time. Got and, it. <laughs> uh, which, which saves me some time. Uh, I have yeah. promised myself that in uh, 2020, uh, LinkedIn is going to get a lot more of my attention. Twitter is going to Twitter and Instagram will get a lot more of my attention. So I'll yeah. uh, I'll be tweeting and Instagramming and. Uh, <laughs> And, and, awesome. and in it more in the in the new year. Well, I think I think Instagram is my favorite right now. I think Twitter is second, and I think the I think Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn are the ones I use the most. Now, what is it about you, Instagram? What I love about Instagram is the visual. You know that it's all visual. You know, so it's. You can post a video. I love like Instagram stories where you can use like boomerang and it's just like fun little like components of adding a creative, an extra creative level to it. And I know you can do Facebook stories, but it's, I'm just not motivated on there. Like I'm not, it's just too much Facebook. And you like actually can do other stuff. You know what I you mean? Can go, you like, can go from Instagram <clears throat> to both Twitter and Facebook and to yeah. And I think some other platforms as well, just from Instagram. Yeah. I don't usually put like, I don't usually cross promote. Like I'll do it separately because I just like it to be kind of like organic from me. But I don't know. It's weird. Well, sometimes I'll share it some other places, but I just love the, I love the visual aspect of it. It makes me think outside the box. It makes me be more creative on Instagram. I have to think about what are my hashtags going to be and what are my, why is this picture relevant to what my company is trying to represent? You know what I mean? Or yeah, why? Those are, all the, those are all the reasons I haven't been using it, but, <laughs> but <that> I should. <laughs> Oh, God, All right, David, 2020, <laughs> you got to get some good stuff up on Instagram. Come on. All yeah. right. I'm, I'm going to make that a, one of my New Year's resolutions here that I need to start before. Yeah, before. because like for you, especially like, I mean, I was doing like videos like before, I think it was before Mavo 2018. I was doing like so many videos, like it would just be random, not not random messages, but like there would be a purpose behind them. Like the videos had such a good response on LinkedIn. People were like, oh, I've been seeing your videos everywhere, advertising your conference, blah, blah, blah. People respond to it because they want to see like you're a real person. They don't, they want to know like, oh, I mean, they see me on here. You know what I mean? But it's like, oh, she's a real person. She's really doing this. It's not just like a random like person out there saying like, oh, I'm, I'm a voice actor. Are you really? Okay. Yeah, she really is. You know? So like, especially with you with you know you're so good at doing videos and stuff like that you could just your whole instagram could be like you know just your 
for advice on Instagram or whatever. Like that's that could be like a thing. I'm just giving you so many good ideas right now, Dave. I'm well, coming up good, with a plan for you for Instagram. Like <laughs> I'll take them in. Take it in. <laughs> you know what? No, what because like like what I'm thinking is like you could do like a weekly something just short, you know, like a one minute video on something really important about voiceover, like voiceover advice for either new people or for advanced pros or whatever. And you just put your short video on Instagram and people see it and your whole page is, you know, a video per week. And then the in-between stuff is like you doing some like, you know, video game character, or whatever. Obviously you don't necessarily have to always have the content of what you're recording because it's probably, you know, NDA and all that. But people love to see that stuff, you know, yeah. and that's where you, you know, you already have the look going and you already have the the personality and the reputation already established. So that's like an easy, just get to it. You know what? It makes it. sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Now that I've challenged you to your Instagram, that's your Instagram challenge for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Val, like, hold on, I need to. Instagram challenge. <laughs> so, all right. So you you said that you're going to what's you're you're doing the Silvas next week? Is that what? Oh yeah, the the uh, Society of Voice Arts Awards. Um, they, it's, uh, that's voiceover and the Sovos, uh, the voice arts awards are, uh, every year, uh, either in New York or Los Angeles and the last couple of years, last year and this year they're in Los Angeles cool. and I'll be a presenter at the Sovas and I'll be on a, a couple of panels, uh, at the voice arts awards or at the, at, uh, that's voiceover and, um, uh, real good conference, real good conference. Yeah, I know that Joan and Rudy do a great job with that. That's exciting. So any other appearances that you have coming up that you'd like to tell us about? Uh, well, you know, uh, some teaching things. I just got back from um, uh, Atlanta a couple, two, three weeks ago. Uh, was Walker Stalker, uh, <laughs> which I had a great time. Apparently there were some financial problems and there were a few people grousing and uh, not happy, but it, it, I, I had a good time. Uh, and uh, I'll be doing some more uh, of those kinds of conventions next year. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll be teaching up in San Francisco in January. Uh, in February, I'll be here. Uh, I'll be in Atlanta in March doing some teaching. Um, and and just doing you know being in my studio doing my regular work yeah I make appearance awesome. every day in my studio <laughs> that's great that's so good well i'm really glad that your your success is continuing and i hope it just keeps going you know forever that's that's amazing and um so tell everyone again your website so that they can it's, check it's out real your easy davefenoy.com and that's Fenoy with two N's, D-A-V-E-F-E-N-N-O-Y. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, uh, coaching, uh, hit the study VO tab at the top. Uh, you can sign yourself up, your email, and phone number. I'll send you information. You'll find out when I'm, in, when I'm gonna be in your town and, <laughs> and, and, and how to get private coaching and all of that. And, uh, and just tips from time to time on uh, various aspects of voiceover. Cool. All right, you guys. Well, check out Dave at DaveFenoy.com, and I will put the link to his website in the video below. And um, thanks a lot for joining us. And that, thanks thank for tuning you. in, guys. At one point, now, I remember when you said, oh, it, it'll take, you know, half hour, 40 minutes. <laughs> We've been doing this an hour and a half. And, and, oh and I'm not saying this as a complaint. I'm reporting. That means there's a lot of really good content in here. And you have <laughs> really good questions. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have talked this long. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> You're welcome, Val. Love you, kiddo.